Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And today, we've got cattle on the menu. Won't you join me and let's paint this little cow? Come on, let's paint. All right, the phenomenon of the painted cow has taken the internet by storm. And so at uh, Let's Paint, we're going to paint our own version of a cow. And this is not necessarily a realistic cow. It's kind of a fun, impressionistic cow. And I found this palette sign at a craft store and it had a nice rustic look to it. So I thought it would be perfect to paint a little cow on. And I brushed a couple of coats of water-based varnish on this to seal it. And then when that had dried completely, I gave it a nice sanding so that it was just a little bit smoother. There's still plenty of texture in the background and we're going to use that to our advantage. Um, I've transferred uh, my design to the surface using white transfer paper and it's very critical that you get the eyes transferred beautifully onto your surface. So we're actually going to start painting the cow's eyes because I want to have a little friend with me the whole time I'm painting this. So I'm going to use some folk art pure black to start out with and I'm going to use a what I would consider a small flat brush. This is about a half inch flat brush and I'm going to load the flat brush with pure black and I'm using the original folk art acrylics and I simply want to come over here to this eye that you see less of and very neatly and carefully paint this eye in. I've been accused of having a cow that was just a cyclops because someone couldn't see this other eye, so I want to make sure that you all are well aware of it. I'm turning this around just so I can see a little better what I'm doing, and just want to make sure that that eye is filled in with solid black. Then we're going to move on to the eye that we see the whole eyeball, and we're just going to fill it in with pure black. And if you need to, you can turn the work so that it's more comfortable for you. And I may have to spin this around a little bit more. Try not to make you all sick by spinning things around, but I do move my work quite a bit when I'm painting, just so that it's easier for me to either pull the brush toward me or push it away, whichever I need to do. But you always want to move your work surface so that your work is comfortable for you. And because this barn wood is very textured, you might have to go back and forth to get a nice smooth edge on something. So just move the surface as you need to. All right, so I've got that eye filled in. I'm gonna set my brush aside and pick up a little titanium white and put that out on my palette. And I'm going to wipe my brush to take the excess black off the brush. I'm going to just work the side of my brush into some titanium white, move to a clean spot on the palette, and I want to blend and soften this white into the brush. Pick up a little bit more white. I want to make a dull gray color, but I want it graduated across the brush. And I'm doing all the work here on my palette before I go to my surface. And then right on the eye, right at the edge here, that's too bright, but that don't worry about that yet. I'm just going to add a little bit of white. And I'm just going to pat and soften that in. And that gives a little bit of a grayish, um, it's not really a highlight area, but just a little bit of a light uh, reflected area there. And then I'm going to come out here to this eye that we only see part of it. And I'm going to just add a little gray right at the outside edge and just soften that in. So far we haven't done anything that's terribly difficult. Um, we've got our eye started here. That eye is all finished up over there. I'm going to take a number two script liner brush and I'm going to load it 
with some titanium white. I'm going to thin this down so that it comes off of my brush. Touch my brush to water, blot on a paper towel, and then thin the paint down a little bit. I want to check to make sure that there's not a drop of water that's resting at the edge of the ferrule and the bristles, and this time there's not, but oftentimes I'll load my brush and I'll just touch the brush right to the edge of a paper towel to pull any excess moisture off of the liner brush. Now, moving this a little bit closer, I'm going to paint this white uh, area right around the eye, and it's just going to be filled in solid with white. And if you've been practicing, you should be able to do this pretty easily. And I know some of you are watching going, oh my God, he makes that look so easy. I could never do that. Well, it is pretty easy for me to do that. And it's because I've spent years and years and years practicing using my liner brush. And I can make it do just about anything I want to. And the more you practice, you'll be able to make your liner brush do anything you want it to do too. So we're going to paint that on there and we're just going to let that dry. I'm going to set both of these brushes aside and get ready for some fur on our cow. And so I'm going to make a big pile of gray. I'm just going to add some more titanium white to my puddle. And using a palette knife, I'm going to add a small amount of black to my puddle of white. Don't worry, we'll get more white paint out when we need it. I want you to get in the habit of thoroughly mixing your paint and pushing it back into a puddle. But you don't want any bits of paint that are not mixed in. And the next thing to be in the habit of doing is always wiping your palette knife off once you've used it. This way your palette knife is always clean if you need to go back and put it in another pile of paint. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit more black because I want this gray to be a little bit darker and thoroughly mix the paint in. Notice that I mix and mash the paint down, always pushing it back into a puddle and then thoroughly mixing it. I don't want you to try to stir your paint like this because that's never going to get it mixed up. You have to get in there and really mash it. All right, I think that's a nice, oh, look at that extra black there. Got to mix that in. You always want to make sure that your paint's thoroughly mixed so you don't pick up a surprise on your brush. And then let's make sure to push that up into a puddle. And clean our palette knife off. Okay, to start painting our cow, I'm going to use a large flat brush and I'm going to pick up some of this gray and I want you to hold your brush back on the handle and think of it as your magic wand as we're going to create some magic here. Hopefully it's going to be good magic and there's not, there is a technique that we're going to employ here and it's just kind of scrubbing on some color and you have to kind of release yourself from thinking exactly how your cow is going to look when you're done because it's all just a matter of scrubbing some paint on like this. See how I've let some of this uh, textured background show through? And you just, if you hold the brush back, you're going to put on this paint in a loose casual fashion. There's not a particular stroke to this. It's all just kind of loosely pulling this color on. And we're just going to add some gray to the face of the cow. We're going to jump all around as we do this. So just kind of follow along. Uh, it's a good idea, I think, if you watch the video all the way through before you start to paint so that you can see how we put it together. I'm going to add a little bit of black on my brush just a little bit like that and mix it in because I want some variety. I don't want all of this to be the exact same color. And I'm going to come over here and just add some dark gray. I think for most people, it's much more difficult to paint in a very loose, relaxed manner. 
if you've got something that has to look a certain way or it absolutely positively has to be a certain shape, you're more likely to feel comfortable um, fussing a little bit and making that happen. But when things can be a little bit loose and relaxed, uh, it's a little harder uh, to do. It's certainly harder for me to be a loose, relaxed painter. I tend to, to paint everything a little more, have a little more tight painter. But this I'm working on to be a very loose, casual cow. And you can see letting lots of the background um, work through this. Always try to set yourself up for success. If I were to be painting this on a very um, slick uh, surface without any texture on it, this would be much more difficult to do. But I'm just kind of working some gray on, coming right down around the nose with some gray. And again, I've got, I'm holding my brush way back on the handle, so it's hard to be precise. And just work right up next to those design lines. And again, don't try to fill this in solidly. You want this to be loose, casual, and relaxed. And if you're like me, when you start to do something like this, you'll be anything but loose casual or relaxed, and that's all right. You just have to go with it. You'll find your comfort zone as you continue to paint. And again, just put some on and then scratch it around a little bit. There's a lot more to go on top of this. come right up around the eye. Do be a little bit more careful right around the eye. Got to remember to hold your brush back on the handle and just kind of scrub this on. And it's important to remember that you're having fun while you're doing this. It's not hard. It's easy. You're enjoying this. You're scrubbing some paint on your little cow. And apparently, everybody in the USA loves a cow painting. So yours is going to be loved by those around you. Let's come over here and we'll put in some of this gray in this little area too while we've got it going on. Again, just scrubbing this on. not hard to do. Just relax and let it be natural. Okay, it's another little gray area right back here along the back. So let's just get some color on there. Right now we're just kind of developing the areas that are going to be different colors. Still want to come and paint a little bit more carefully around the eye area. So I'm going to give my cow a little bit of a turn. And probably when you looked at this painting originally, you thought it was a lot more brown and rust colored, but there's an awful lot of gray and white on this cow. Carefully, right around the eye. Okay, so we've got a lot of our gray area blocked in, and I think it's looking looking pretty good so far. Uh, so I'm going to add some other colors to my palette so that we can paint his nose and his mouth. So I'm going to add a little naphthol crimson, And I'm going to add a little pure orange. And I think I need some more titanium white. I know we're going to need some more white, but just get a little white out to start now. So 
We're going to block in a little bit on the nose and the mouth area. So I'm going to take my gray color and I'm going to add a little naphthol crimson to this, which is going to give me a strange kind of purpley red color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten that up so that we can make that a little bit more pink. And I'm going to add some orange to it. It's kind of a strange, um, kind of a fleshy, um, fleshy purple color, I guess, is about the best way I can describe this color. But it's our gray plus some naphthol crimson and white with a little orange. And you're going to end up with this really soft color. And if it were given a name, we'd call it cattle nose. And we're just going to brush this color on little cow's nose. And do be careful when you put your design on. Try not to make sure that the um, dividing line doesn't go straight through the eye. This is a little bit up to the top. You just got to pay attention to that and that the nose, it's not dissecting both of the nostrils on there because that would look a little odd. So got to think a little bit about where you put your design on something like this. So again, some white, some gray, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and we're just mixing up our cattle nose color. I'm going to turn this around and just going to brush this on. See, this color is a little bit lighter than that other color, and that's okay. It's all going to be a bit different. We'll add a little bit more red and orange to this. I'm going to fill in over there just a little bit more, and over here some. Okay, going to turn this back around so that I can see what I'm doing right side up. And I'm going to add a little bit more gray, and this time I'm going to darken that gray up a little bit. And pay attention to how I'm loading this up on my palette. I'm just adding the darker gray color to one half of the brush. And I'm going to come back over here to the nose, and I'm going to apply this darker color right along the outside edge of the nose and a little bit along the bottom. If you load your brush properly on the palette, you should just be able to kind of dab and soften this color on. I'm going to pick up a little bit more dark. If I want to, I can add just a little bit more black to it. Again, most of the work is being done on the palette. So I spend more time over here getting this brush loaded properly so that when I come back to the painting of the cow, I just have to dab a little bit and the work is done for me. I'm going to lay that brush down and I'm going to add some burnt umber to my palette. And if you're working along with me, you might want to stop and catch up and then restart your video as you need to. I'm just going to keep working along. Now I've got uh, my brush. I've picked up burnt umber on the same dark side that I had the gray in before. I've just added burnt umber to that side. I could have shaded with gray but the burnt umber is going to give me a little bit of variety and difference in coloration. So I'm going to begin to come in here and add this dark color, making a big nostril. Cows have surprisingly large nostrils. And if you've never actually heard a cow or a calf mooing before, they're incredibly loud animals. I used to live out in the country and our neighbors had cattle and they were beautiful at a distance but when they would wean the baby cows away from their mothers the noise at night was just unbearable remember asking my mom how long those cows were going to be out there mooing all night long as a young kid that bothered me just about as much as anything i could think of at the time because it was just night after night after night of that endless mooing. But I guess those little baby cows miss their mamas. 
So added a little bit of black on my brush. I'm just deepening the shading in the nostril. And I'll do the same thing on the other one. And it doesn't take much and you can already start to see that the cow's nostril is forming nicely. I'm going to set this brush down and pick up a clean brush because I'm going to start to add a little bit more um, pink and orange to this and then highlight a little bit on the nose. So I'll pick up some titanium white and we'll add a little naphthol crimson to it. And that's going to give me a nice bubblegum pink color. Whoa, that's a little bright. So I'll add some more white to that. Then add a little orange to kind of calm that color down a little bit. You wouldn't ordinarily think that orange is a calming color, but for that bright bubblegum pink I had, it simmers it right on down. All right, let's add a little bit of this color here along the top of the nose. And then just let that feather out a little bit. Let's add some down here in this corner. Again, not softly, smoothly blending everything in. We're just kind of adding some of these fun accent colors. Then I'll wipe my brush off. Pick up a little bit of white. And I'm not really side loading the brush because I don't have any water in it. But I am, as you can see, I've picked up more white and the white is stronger on one side of the brush. And I've just sort of blended it across the brush a little bit. And I'm going to come in here and add, whoa, that's really, really white. Don't quite want it that white. So I'm just going to dirty it up a little bit and come back on here. And we're just going to add a little bit of this softer white now right around that nostril. And that's all I'm going to do to that. I'm not going to try to blend it to death. Just add a little bit of white up here for a little bit of a highlight. Some above the nostril over here. And then add a little bit underneath. Let me pick up some more white paint. Notice that I'm always sneaking into the edge. And then I'm acting like I'm side loading it. But I've just got a dirty brush from that um, nice uh, pinky color we made. So it's a dirty brush and stronger white that's soft white, not pure white. And then I can come right back in there and pat some of this highlighting on. And because I do the work on the palette, it's much easier to get it correct on the surface. So I'm going to go back to the original flat brush that I started with, and I'm going to pick up some of the gray color. And going to mix up a little bit of my gray with some naphthol crimson and some pure orange, making that strange cow nose color. And I'm going to just simply brush some of that onto the mouth area of my little cow. Pat that on there like that. I'm going to pick up some burnt umber again, like I'm pretending to um, side load my brush and blend that in, softening the color on the brush so that I'm doing the work on the palette. Then I'm going to come right onto the surface and I'm going to need some more paint on my brush. But I want to add some dark color underneath the nose and let it just come across. Again, picking up more dark color. Coming right underneath the nose and around. And we're just going to let that kind of trail out a little bit. I'm going to turn my work surface slightly so I can come toward me. And just bring that right up under the nose. Just like that, I guess I'm painting the cow's chin for lack of a better anatomical term for it. Okay, and so just coming back and just softening that down a little bit. And I can mix up a little bit of 
orangey pink. Pick up a little bit of white to lighten that up. And this is some of the fun of brush mixing. I can just change and adjust the color on the fly. I'm not locked into any particular color. Anytime I need to change it, I can. Okay, so now I'm just going to dab a little bit of this pinky color on. Take some of that off the brush because there's an awful lot I can tell just from that little test mark there. And just soften that on a little bit. And we're going to leave that alone. So we've, we're three quarters of the way through all the hard stuff. We're going to come back up to the cow's eye. And this is not, we're not trying to paint an iris and a pupil and all of that kind of stuff because that's just, that's just too much stuff going on there. And we need this to be kept pretty simple. So I'm going to add some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna to my palette. And I'm going to pick up a smaller brush. And I'm going to just load half of the brush. Did not put my brush in water. This is very dry. Uh, load my brush with some burnt umber just on half the brush and let the other brush have nothing in it. And we're going to come up here to this little cow's eye and we're going to add a little bit of burnt umber right along the bottom and just brushing up into the black area a little bit. Maybe a little bit hard to see. I'm going to brighten that up for you in just a second. Wipe the burnt umber out of my brush. I'm going to uh, pick up burnt sienna on the brush in the same way, just on half the brush. And that burnt umber is already nice and dry. So I'm going to come over here with some burnt sienna and just brighten that color up. Soften it into the eye a little bit. You can probably see that a little better. It's a nice rusty color there because cows generally have a nice big brown eye. So I'm going to wipe my brush out and now I'm going to put that same side of the brush that I had the burnt sienna. I'm going to put it into some yellow ochre and soften the color on the palette. Don't want too much paint on the brush this time. And I'm going to do a little bit smaller area just with a little bit of yellow ochre and just soften that into the eye. And that gives the eye now a nice soft brown look to it. So it's not just a cold black eye staring at you. And then to make our little friend come to life, I'm going to use my number two script liner brush and some titanium white that I've thinned down. And we're going to give him a glint in his eye. And by glint, I do not mean a tiny pin speck of white. This is a pretty big eye, and if you give him just a pin speck of white, he's going to look like the meanest little cow ever. And that's not what we want. We want just to give him a nice glint in his eye. All right, now I've got a friend with me. He's going to paint the rest of himself, I suppose, but he'll be a nice companion to have. I'm going to rinse out uh, my brush. Not completely clean it, but get some of that paint out of it because I'm going to add some shading around the eye. So I want to get some of that gray out of the brush. And I'm going to load the brush with um, some burnt sienna and some burnt umber. And my brush has moisture in it, so you'll see a little bit more of a smooth gradation of color. And I'm going to turn my work again, and I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow right that white comes out a little bit. And we'll do the same thing on the back side of the eye. Then I'm going to wipe the brush out, load it up with more burnt umber. And 
and I'm going to establish the dark area beneath the eye. And just brushing this burnt umber on. If you need to add some water to your brush, touch your brush to the water, blot it on a paper towel, and then you can come back to your painting. And this is just a dark area underneath the eye. We're also going to um, rinse the brush just a little bit more. And I'm going to load it this time with some pure black. And I want to blend that out very nicely because I'm going to cast a shadow on this white portion of the eye. And we're just going to set that on there like that and then walk the color down a little bit. And you can see that we've nicely softened that shadow there. We're going to do the same thing on the back side of the eye. So once again, I've got to turn my work surface so that it's always at a comfortable angle for me. And then we're just going to walk that color down. And that just really softens that white ring around the eye. Okay, now I'm going to load my brush with some burnt sienna and maybe just a little bit of naphthol crimson to make this a little bit brighter red. And right above the eye, I'm just going to stroke on some of this color. This is not the last you're going to see of this, but it's the initial spot of red there. Okay, now I'm going to set that brush aside and I'm going to go back to my large one inch brush that we started with and I'm going to just clean that brush out because we're about to switch from gray to dark brown. So I need to rinse that out well. And dry it off on my paper towel. Now I'm going to load my brush with some burnt umber and just a little bit of black to darken that down so that I get a really nice dark shading color. And we're going to start on the inside of the ear over here. And this is the one place that you have to be a little bit careful with because we need to make sure that we don't mess up this eye over here. So we're going to come in and we're going to come right next to that eye, keeping its nice round shape. Remember, we've got that little bit of gray right out at the edge there. So again, my brush is loaded with burnt umber and some pure black. Make a really, really dark shading brown. And just going to pull this a little bit lengthwise to fill in some of that texture. Probably need to keep my head out of the way there so you can see what I'm doing. So just coming right along that edge with some of this super dark brown. And then I'm going to turn this right side up. Reload my brush again with burnt umber and some pure black. And I'm going to hold my brush back at the end of the handle like it's my magic wand. And we're painting the inside of the cow's ear. Just dab and stroke this on. And now I'm going to set my brush down and I'm going to add a little bit more of my highlight colors to my palette. So I've got plenty of paint to work with. I've got yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and pure orange out. And that's what we're going to start highlighting with. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel pretty well. And I'm going to turn this little guy this way. And I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna. And here we go, just stroking and dabbing some on. Now some yellow ochre.
And just for grins, we'll add some pure orange to this. And Okay, one inside of one ear done. And I'm just gonna leave that because that's absolutely fine. Wipe my brush off. We're gonna paint the other inside of this ear. And once again, I'm gonna start with Burnt Umber and Pure Black, because I want a really nice dark shading color. Load my brush up, hold it back like a magic wand. Gonna scrub some of that on. Now shifting to just some Burnt Umber. And again, you see the brilliant technique that I'm using, just lightly scrubbing some color on, letting the background work for me, letting it show through and become an integral part of the painting. I really like how that looks right down in there, so that we'll leave that alone for sure. If I want to, I could add just a little bit of burnt sienna up in there to lighten that a little bit. You're becoming a cute little cow. It's nice to have the um, subject that you're painting with joining you through. I took a workshop from a gal years and years ago and I asked her why she always painted the eye of the animal first. And she said, so I can have a friend painting with me all day long. And so I thought that made a lot of sense and it really is easier if you get those eyes painted then they just become part of uh, your conversation while you're painting. So now some burnt sienna, and we're just gonna put on the outside of his little ears. So notice I'll have more paint in some areas and less in others. So we're coming out here to the end, and we're just gonna kind of dab that on, using the um, corner of the brush to dab some of this on so I get some nice rounded shapes out there. And just bring this on around. Again, working loosely and casually. Wipe my brush off. Gonna pick up some yellow ochre and some pure orange. Make a nice highlight color there. And let's see, this time I'm gonna add a little bit more orange. So I would like this to be more orange than ochre. And we'll just add in some of the highlights out here at the edge of his little ears. And no two cows that you paint will be alike, and that's a good thing. They're all gonna be little individual cows. All right, so I'm gonna leave that ear alone. I'm going to go back to a brush that has some gray color in it. And I'm going to pick up the original gray and we're going to come back over to this other ear and we're going to paint it because it needs to have some fun color on it. So just stroking that on. Let me move that up a little bit so you can see it better. So we're stroking on some of the original gray and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of pure black with that because I want to make this a little darker. And still not quite happy with that color. Again, I think it's really important and I keep saying it over and over because it's vital that you learn to spend as much time on the palette getting your brush ready to paint as you do actually painting. Sometimes a lot more time getting it ready. So I'm gonna take some of this dark color and just kind of add a little bit here at the bottom of the ear and let that uh, fade away. I'm gonna just come back and see if I can't pound a little bit of extra dark right down there. There we go. Again, not worrying about it too much, letting it be loose and casual. All righty, so we've painted our two ears, our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. We are really cooking with gas. Now, I want to 
um, I think right now, because I've got a mess going everywhere, and I think if you're painting along with me, there are probably a few areas that you might want to go touch up, add a little bit more color here and there, but I think it's a good place that we pause the video, and I'm just going to clear the decks and get my brushes all cleaned, and then we're going to come back and begin to paint the highlights on the gray portion, and then we'll paint the brown portions of the cow. So if you need to, pause your video and join us when we come back. <coughs> All right, I feel much better now that I've cleaned up my workspace, got a fresh palette going, cleaned my brush that I'm gonna use. Anytime that you feel like everything's just a mess, stop, straighten things out, and then come back to your painting. All right, so now we're going to work on these brown patches on our cow. So first thing I need to do, I thought I was all ready, but I need a little burnt umber out. And we may need some other colors as we go, so we'll just add them as we need to. But I'm going to take some burnt umber. And I don't want to paint the outside edge of my cow solid. I want it just to kind of fade away um, nice and easy. So I'm going to start back up in my cow a little bit and just kind of scrub some of this color out and just let it kind of fade away. Easy peasy. Again, you want to make sure to let your background work for you. You can paint this on a canvas if you want to. Um, you could um, crumble tissue paper up to make a more textured canvas. And in the winter landscape video, you can see that as the background that we used there. All right, so just moving some of this burnt umber back, you can see there's much more background showing here, and it's a little bit more solid as we move up. Don't want it completely solid, but again, just picking up a small amount of paint and scrubbing it on. Nice and easy. Just relax, think pleasant thoughts while you're painting this. Think about a nice hamburger. I'm going to pick up a little burnt sienna and scrub some of that on as we move up. Move over here, add some burnt sienna. And I hope you notice that I'm moving my brush around the whole time I'm scrubbing this color on. Because each time I change the direction of the brush, I'm going to leave a different shaped mark on there. And the more interesting your brush marks are, the more interesting this painting's going to be overall. I hope you all are interested enough to really start exploring art and paintings and visiting museums and galleries. And when you start to look at paintings, you'll begin to notice that uh, the brush marks that the artists use are as individual as a fingerprint or um, handwriting. There's a very nice documentary series on the internet about the importance or the interest in brush marks. And it starts off and shows the Renaissance brushwork as being very smooth and even, and it moves up into contemporary paintings. And like if you were to compare a Van Gogh painting to a Renaissance painting, the brushwork in Van Gogh's is much more casual, relaxed. The paint is much thicker. And it's just very interesting to note the difference in the way artists apply their paint. All right, so now we've had burnt umber for the dark. We've added lots of this rich, rusty burnt sienna color. I'm gonna wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up some pure orange. And I think that's just gonna be way, way too bright. So I'm going to soften it with a little yellow ochre and maybe just a little burnt sienna. Better to be a little too toned and we can brighten it up than to be screaming bright and have to try to hide it. So let's come back on here. We were had some highlights up on the ear and that's looking okay. And then we're just going to scruffle off some of this on. 
Ah, I'm liking the way that's looking. That's fun. I think you have to give yourself permission to really like what you're doing. You don't have to be your own worst critic. There will be plenty of people to tell you what's wrong with your paintings. Just goes without saying. Unfortunately, sometimes it's family members, sometimes it's friends, but you can be your own cheerleader. I just made a new highlight color and it's kind of bright and that's fine. It's not too overpowering. But one thing I want you to know, I've not ever said we're trying to paint this fur in any specific direction. I'm only talking about dabbing on some highlights and making interesting brush marks. I think that will relieve a lot of pressure on you. So now I've just added a little bit more orange to this. And I can add just a little bit of naphthol crimson. And there is no specific recipe for this. You just do what feels comfortable to you and what you think is going to look good. I want to add a little bit of naphthol crimson to this to make a little bit more orangey red color. And that's looking pretty nice on there. Yay! I don't want to make the little cow a strawberry blonde, but just some little orangey red highlights here and there. It, this adds more interest than if it was all just this same highlight color. So, you know, make your paintings interesting. You want people to look at them and enjoy them. So you've got to give them something to look at, but you don't have to hit them over the head with it. Let's add a little bit of that fun color up here. And maybe just to have a little fun over here, not too much. That's enough fun over there. All right, I'm thinking that that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more of a highlight here. And I'm going to leave that alone before I play with it too much and mess it up. All right, now shifting to a clean, dry brush. And I'm going to load my brush up with some of my original gray color, which I transferred to this palette. And I'm going to lighten it up with some titanium white. Again, holding the brush back on the handle. If you hold your brush right, it's really hard to make detailed, precise painting motions when you've got your brush held like this. So we're going to just start adding some gray. That's actually a little bit bright to start off with. want it to be lighter than the original color we put on, but not going to beat myself up for that. Just add some white here. Just kind of scrubbing it on. The cow does have, surprisingly enough, a cow lick right here in the center of his little head. So um, marks are going to move outward around that little cow lick in a kind of not starburst shape, but a they're going to move in a spiral direction. See? Strokes over here go this way, these go down, these go this way, those go up. So we're working around an imaginary uh, spot in his little forehead. So again, mixture of original gray and some titanium white. Kind of take the excess off your brush a little bit. And we're going to scruffy up some little highlight from the snoot up. Right, make sure we get some bright color over here. Be careful as you're scooting up next to the eye that you don't inadvertently make a big swing and obliterate the eye you worked on earlier. That would be a not so fun thing to do. Kind of stay out of some of that dark and we have to begin to build a little bit brighter area right above the eye. We're going to come back and put some more burnt sienna back in that area, so don't worry about that. Down here, not so much worried about the direction of anything, just get a little scruffy highlight going on down there. And that's going to be gracious plenty down there. 
We have this little area back here. Need to put in some light. I mean, I don't know how much easier that could be. Uh, certainly not working hard on it. Just dabbing some color on, picking up some more white. Blot some of the excess paint off on your paper towel. Hold the brush back at the end of the handle so you can't really be precise. And then we're just adding some highlights. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty simple. That's really nice there, and it's going to be hard for me to not mess with that. But just want to add some lighter areas. Let's go back to his little face. And again, starting with some white. Every time you paint this little design, and I hope you paint it more than once, uh, so that you can see that it's going to be different every time. Um, some of them you're going to like more than others, but each time you paint it, you're going to create a different little cow. They're all going to be adorable, but they're all going to be different, and they're all going to have their own personalities, because you can never quite duplicate this. It's all just a matter of scritching some of this lighter color on, and I just keep picking up more white. In your Let's Paint kit, you will have a beautiful full color photograph of the finished painting. So you can see exactly where all of my highlights are, where my shading is, and you'll be able to just look at that and create your own. And this really is a fun painting to do because once you start to build up these kind of um, rough highlights, the, the painting just takes on a personality of its own. And you'll know, like, oh, I need to come over here and scrub a little bit of highlight on there. Or, no, just a big dab there is going to be all I need. And it'll become very kind of therapeutic for you just to dab on some of these highlights. And I am always amazed that I'm able to teach you this and dab something on and leave it alone when if I was just painting by myself, I would probably find some excuse to come back and play in something until it lost all of its spontaneity. But teaching you, I've got a limited amount of time and I've got to get it done. And so I'm thinking that that's a good thing, just building up some of these highlights and build this up a little bit more, then I'm going to come in and be much more careful and I'm going to add, whoa, that was close. Um, Got to pay attention to just adding some of the highlights above the eye and I'm kind of happy with that so I'm going to really stop because I could mess that up. But let's come back up here and give him some little bit brighter highlights there. Carry some of that up. Got to have some light hairs here and there. Could stand a little bit there. Whoa, that was good. Okay, I mean, it's always exciting to do this, and you'll find you have some pleasant, hopefully you'll have more pleasant surprises than unpleasant surprises. Wow, it's looking so good. I'm loving him. One of my coworkers thought I should name this painting Veal which I thought was very funny. Okay, just taking stock of what I've done here, looking at things. I think I'm going to come back where I got a little bit of dark color on that portion of the eye. I think that needs a little t bit of correction. So I'm gonna take my number two liner brush, filled with water, and I'm going to thin down some titanium white and I'm going to add just a speck of burnt umber to it so that it's not stark white. It's still going to be very, very pale. And again, I've got a little tiny drip of water where the bristles and the ferrule meet, so I'm going to touch my brush to my paper towel and get that off of there so that when I touch my brush to the surface, that water doesn't all run down and bleed. So turn my work so that it's comfortable for me. 
and just gently stroke back over that to straighten that out. And I think that looks much, much better now. And the only thing I want to do is to add a little bit of burnt sienna to the area above the cow's eye. So I'm going to take my flat brush and side load it with some burnt sienna. And there's a little water on the brush. And that's okay, it's a little dirty, but it's not gonna make any difference. And I'm just gonna come right above that white that we just put on there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna soften that in and leave that alone because I don't wanna make a mess of it. But I think that is one handsome little cow. It was so much fun to paint this little cow today. And we started out working on the eye so that we had a friend to paint along with us. We used the background of the rough wood to accent all of the highlights and additions of color on here. Letting your background work for you is a really important technique to learn. I'd like to invite you to join us on Facebook. The group is Let's Paint with Plaid. You can become part of our online presence with lots of other artists by joining. Be sure to check out our website, pladonline.com forward slash let's paint. There you'll find information about studio lessons, skill builder videos, Let's Paint Live, and Folk Art One Stroke Flower of the Month with Donna Dewberry. See you next time.